What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So last night we got a ton of information from Blizzard on phase two of Season of Discovery and today I wanted to go over, they dropped some more stuff, uh, some clarifications regarding GDKP restrictions and exploitive accounts and bots and things like that. So without further ado guys, let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over here are the clarifications regarding GDKP restrictions in Season of Discovery. This was posted 11 minutes ago by Rockman. Blizzard has shared a long blue post addition, adding additional clarity around what qualifies as a GDKP, why it's being restricted in Phase 2 Season of Discovery, and other speci specifics regarding this new policy direction. Blizzard announced that GDKP raids would be banned in Phase 2 of Season of Discovery in the preview video. So here is the blue post. Um, this is Blizzard talking. Starting with Phase 2 of Season of Discovery, we are going to experiment with a policy change. We will no longer support or allow GDKP or Gold Bid raids and dungeons in Season of Discovery. We've seen many questions about this policy change, so please read on for our answers and more information. What is GDKP and why is it being restricted in Season of Discovery? Now, most of you probably already know, but I'm going to read this article just for anyone who doesn't know what a GDKP is. Uh, GDKP is a loot system some players use that essentially allows all loot to be purchased in a dungeon or raid using gold rather than being rolled for or awarded using another loot system. How this typically works is that an item drops and then is put up for gold bid among the members of the group. Players will submit their gold, their bids, bids in gold, and the highest bidder wins the item. After the item is won, gold is traded to the loot master, and then that gold is usually divided among all the raid members. So basically, for anyone who has never done a GDKP, um, you go into a GDKP, you bid on items. Um, when you win that item, if you win an auction, you trade the raid leader or the loot master that gold and you get the item in return. At the end of that raid, uh, that the pot of gold, let's say it's 1,000 gold that by, by the end of the raid, is then split amongst the raiders and usually the leader takes some sort of a host cut, like let's say 10% off the top, so they're getting 10% of that pot plus their normal cut um, and then the rest is divided amongst the rest of the raiders. So let's continue reading. It's fair to say that GDKP has some benefits to individuals who don't want to be tied to a guild or set raid schedule. GDKP raids are, while mostly transactional in nature, another social activity in the game, and we're hesitant to discourage anything that gets people into groups to play together. However, we've been concerned that GDKP erodes traditional guild and social structures that are in many cases the basis of our most fond memories of early versions of World of Warcraft. It's also undeniable that GDKP contributes to and drives a lot of illicit activity, such as real money trading, RMT, and botting, as it creates a demand for in-game gold that would not otherwise exist. GDKP can create an arms race effect that encourages participating players to purchase gold to be able to compete for the best items. We've seen a lot of feedback and requests from players for us to try putting restrictions on this system, and since Season of Discovery is highly experimental in its nature, this seems like a good op opportunity to try and support a version of WoW without GDKP. This is something we've been dis discussing for quite some time, and this is not a decision we've arrived at lightly. Okay, so basically what they're saying here is GDKPs encourage RMT, or purchasing of gold, right? Because without GDKP, yeah, there's still going to be people who buy gold. Um, but before GDKPs became extremely popular back in 2019 Classic, they were always a thing. But they became really popular in 2019 Classic, and before they became that popular, buying gold wasn't the norm. Right Nowadays, like almost everyone you run into in Classic WoW is buying gold. I wouldn't say everybody, but I would say more than half of the player base that is raiding is buying gold. Uh, so I do agree with this, and I think this is a really good thing, but let's keep on reading. Uh, what exactly constitutes as, as a gold bid or GDKP raid? We're defining GDKP as any raid or dungeon run where items are awarded in exchange for gold. Please note that we have multiple detection methods for GDKP that are effective both inside and outside of dungeon or raid instances. What are the penalties for engaging in GDKP in Season of Discovery? Uh, account actions up to and including suspension and permanent account closure for participating in GDKPs. Wow. Uh, when exactly does this policy go into effect? We'll enact this policy alongside the release of Phase 2 of Season of Discovery on February 8th, 2024 at 1pm PST. 
So I'm assuming that means that we are getting phase two at 4 p.m. my time, Eastern time. So that's pretty exciting. I did not know that there was a time yet. Um, does this policy change affect WoW Classic Era, WoW Classic Hardcore, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, or any other version of World of Warcraft other than Season of Discovery? Uh, and their answer is no. At this time, this policy change will only affect WoW Classic Season of Discovery. Have there been any changes to policies around what is allowed to be advertised in trade or looking for group chat in Season of Discovery? And their answer is yes. To go along with this policy update in Season of Discovery, it is no longer permitted to advertise gold bid GDKP runs in trade, looking for group, or any other in-game chat channel. Player feedback is what led us here, and we're still keenly interested to hear your thoughts and feelings on this topic. Ultimately, this is a test, and if it doesn't work out, we'll revisit this policy for later phases of Season of Discovery. We really appreciate the feedback we've already received on this topic, which helped us arrive at this decision. Thank you. So, in my opinion, I do think this this really is the way to kind of uh, fight RMT in, in Classic WoW, right? If you keep banning people who are buying gold, this and that, like, yeah, you're, you're kind of banning them, but it's really just putting a band-aid on the problem. They're just going to, when they come back or on one of their other accounts, or they're going to just make another account, come back, buy gold again, maybe this time they won't get banned. It really doesn't fix the problem. The root of the problem is why do you need to purchase that much gold? Right. And uh, most of it, I wouldn't say all of it, but a lot of it is because of GDKP. Right. People just want to, you know, people go to work, they come home and they're like, all right, I'm going to buy a thousand gold and just get this character full this and two runs. Like it's it's a very gray area where like there are a lot of people that enjoy this, but it's encouraging purchasing that gold. Now, if you farmed all that gold, uh, in my opinion, if you farmed. OK, so let me give an example. I actually was in a GDKP the other night. I ran a GDKP because I've been bored and it's my way usually of farming gold. I run them and I take a host cut. Um, I'm not upset about this. I would actually prefer them to not be in the game. I'm only doing this because I'm so bored. I have nothing left to do. I can't level another character. I have so many 25s. Um, and it's just an easy way for me to farm gold and it's kind of fun running an auction. But I will say that it 100% encourages RMT for the people who come in there as buyers. I had a priest in my group that whispered me and said, I have 900 gold ready to bid on the staff if it drops. So naturally I invited him because if he comes in and spends a ton of money, I'm gonna get paid out a lot of money and that's the whole reason that I'm running this, right? This is That was my way of like kind of farming gold uh, because there's so many bots currently in the game that it is nearly impossible to like farm anything in the game and make money from it unless you do it for like 12 plus hours a day. Um, so I invited this priest to my group. Staff drops. He goes, gets in a bidding war with another guy. Staff ends up going for fi like 550 gold or something like that. So I ran that GDKP for 31 minutes. And at the end of it, my cut, my payout, since I was the host, was like 150 gold for 30 minutes of my time, which is ridiculous. Um, I've been playing all of Season of Discovery with less than 30 gold in uh, across all my characters. I'm very bad at making gold. Um, so, you know, there's there's no way that that person farmed that gold legit. Uh, because if they did, first off, it would take a long time to farm up 500 gold or whatever to spend on the staff. And you're going to spend all that hard-earned gold, you know, two weeks before the next phase is coming out. I know the staff is going to be pre bis and it's really good, but... You're going to spend 500 gold on a level 25 weapon. So to me, that means this person has an endless supply of gold. They probably work and they probably just purchase gold all the time. Just wanted to give that little bit of an example there. Uh, so I do think this is a really good thing. It's kind of getting the root cause of the problem here out, right? People will still buy gold, but it won't be everybody. I don't think it will be more than half of the player base anymore if GDKPs are not allowed. You simply don't need that much gold for everything. You need gold for your consumes, maybe some items here and there, but guess what? If less people are purchasing gold, items will actually retain some value and you'll be able to actually farm gold in the game. So even if you do play for a few hours a night and you get a lucky drop, that drop might actually sell for a decent amount of gold because everything the economy is not all out of whack because of people buying gold like crazy. Uh, but I don't want to go off on a crazy tangent here. Let's jump over to the other article about botting and exploitive accounts. Okay, so this was another article they posted just a little bit ago. Uh, combating botting and exploitive accounts in Season of Discovery Phase 2. Although not mentioned in the written blog, the Season of Discovery update preview video reveals that Blizzard is rolling out new tech in Phase 2 to help combat botting and exploitive accounts. 
Uh, so they're giving us a little snippet of a slide here from the video. It says, um, botting and exploitive accounts. New tech is coming in phase two, currently in limited testing on live. Early results are highly positive. Thank you for your ongoing reports. So it seems like they're going to be rolling out some kind of new tech to help with catching bots um, and people using exploits within the game, which is really nice. So let's read through this blue post really quick. Another common question that we get, which is somewhat frustrating to answer, simply because the more we talk about it, the, fast, the faster bad actors can work around our efforts, is botting and exploitive accounts. Botting is a colloquial term that includes a lot of exploitive gameplay that players engage in and has a negative impact on the game. It's something we don't like, it's something we actually hate. Spend a lot of time and effort trying to combat. While we can't really talk about the specifics of what we're doing, we do not want to talk about some really, we do want to talk about some exciting new tech that's coming with phase two. We've had this limited in limited testing on live, both in classic and in various flavors of modern for quite some time and we've been seeing some very positive results from it. So we want to set some expectations where there's never really going to be a time where World of Warcraft or really any online game is going to be completely free of bad actors or malicious accounts. But we're very positive about the results we've seen from this new tech, and we're really excited to see it rolled out. Paradoxically, paradoxically, I've never seen that word in my life, the more effective we are at some of these things, the more outwardly visible the bad actors can become. A lot of times, following many of our ban waves, you may actually see an increase in bot activity as bot farms spin up new accounts and start over. There's been a few instances of this happening, where we do a large ban wave, and I've seen online videos posted online of streams of bots going from one part of the world to another. But when you see that stuff, and when you report it, it actually does help. It helps us clamp down on that new method as well. And it gets the bot farms into a position where they are constantly two steps forward and two steps backwards. So it is a really helpful. So they're basically saying, please continue to report. It is working. It's helping them out, which I do believe it is. They ban a ton of bots all the time. It just seems like they aren't because there are so many. And think about it. When a bot gets banned, these people have like hundreds of accounts. I mean, you've seen the videos. I could throw one here if I, if I get a chance. I'll throw one in this video so you guys could see it. I mean, hundreds of accounts. They just spin new ones up and they're botting and they're level 25 again in two days. As much as it's frustrating to see, we really want to encourage you to continue to help us by reporting things and we're going to continue to do exhaustive work on our side for this issue. So I agree. I think these are all good. I'm really excited to know what this new tech is. I'm sure they can't talk about it because if they do talk about it, uh, botters and exploiters are going to already figure out a way to bypass it by the time that it launches. That's the problem with these things. Um, if you've noticed, there's a lot of games that come out. I don't know if anyone here has ever played any FPS or shooters, but these games get announced and they go into beta and there's cheats out for the game before the game even launches. Uh, so it's really, really important to not you know, basically not talk about exactly what um, th this new tech is, and I do completely agree with that, but I'm glad to see Blizzard doing stuff uh, like, you know, talking about restricting GDKP, and talking about this new tech with bots and, and exploitive behavior. I think this is really good. I think they're moving in the right direction. They're listening to the community, and honestly, I couldn't be happier. So let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comments below. I'd love to get into some uh, discussions with you guys, but... If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really does help me out. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And if you want to hang out with me live, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. We're going to be live all through launch, all through the weekend. It's going to be a crazy time. So come hang out. And if you guys are looking for a Discord full of like-minded people who all enjoy geeking out over Classic and Season of Discovery, I'll drop a link to my Discord down in the description as well. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.